Hi, y'all. Welcome to Exchange Student in Fiverland. I don't remember what episode number this is. That was something I should have looked at, but you can look and figure it out. Um, do you remember me? <laughs> I'm Mary, otherwise known as Mary Gale on Plurk and Ravelry. It's been a long time, and I have a lot to talk about. And um, it seems like whenever I thought about sitting down to record, I got really overwhelmed by all of the stuff I wanted to talk about and share with you that I put it off a little bit longer and then stuff grew. So then there was more and more and more to talk about which became more and more overwhelming. So I decided to break it down into sections because it's my podcast and I could do whatever I want and that's what I want to do. So today's podcast we're only going to have two As I was saying, today's podcast, we're only going to have two topics. We're going to be talking about my works in progress slash what I've been learning. And then we're also going to talk about uh, my stash enhancement, otherwise known as souvenirs. So, welcome. And um, I hope you have your knitting with you and a favorite drink. Um, and let's get started. The first one that I want to talk about my row row socks which I love 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 and they're coming along very nicely I'm doing two at a time toe up magic loop um, I'm gonna try to hold it up so you can see the um, cabling isn't that pretty and then there's also cabling on the back. You can, I don't know how well you can see it. I've already turned the heel. Uh, they're probably about the size of regular socks, but I'm going to try to make these uh, knee high. So I still have quite a bit to go. And um, I'm loving the pattern. The um, It's on um, size 1, which is 2.25 millimeter. The socks I'm using are called Walk Away Sock Yarn from Hobby Lobby. And I got two of these, so I've got plenty to make knee highs as long as I can hold out that long because I really want to wear them. Um, the yarn is a little strange, and I can't remember if I told you about this or not. It, um, can you see how it kind of bunches up? It's, I mean, it's not bad. It doesn't stay bunched up. When I knit with it, I just pull it out. But it's it's kind of like there's two layers, an inside layer and an outside layer. And the outside is, um, I don't know, big and, like, too big for the inside layer. I don't know. It's weird, but it's not taking away from the pattern. It's not taking away from the yarn as far as making it and everything. So... It's just weird. My husband told me that it was because I'm not doing continental like I said I would do, and so the yarn is rebelling against me. <laughs> but speaking of continental, I was getting so frustrated because I loved the socks so much, I just wanted to knit and knit and knit, but the continental was holding me back. And um, I think I said something about it on, I think I might have said it on the, um, Ravelry group, but I might have said it on Plurk. But Tina, the I can't even remember. She's knitting bloomer, knitter, knitting blooms or blooming knitter. But she's the blooming knitter. She has a podcast as well. Tina told me that um, when she was learning continental, she did swatches instead because it was so frustrating wanting to work on a project that it was holding you back. And I've um, when she said that, it kind of like gave me permission to break my own rule. And it's got me thinking, why do we make these rules for ourselves? We're trying to knit because it's fun. It's a leisure activity. And why do we make rules like, oh, I can't cast on until I have this many off. Or, for instance, I was saying, well, I only can do continental knitting. And that was taking away from the fun. So I broke that rule. And I haven't made a swatch 
but I have been practicing Continental on the Row Row Socks and on all of the other projects that I've been doing. I've been practicing and I've gotten really good at it. It's not um, something that I switch to naturally, but it has been oh, it has been um, fun, and I think I could do it. I'm not really ready for anything fancy like ooh, knit two together with Continental style. Maybe I could do that. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but like yarn overs and um, things like that. I'm still still not feeling very comfortable with it, but I'll get it eventually. I feel a lot um, more confident with it. But um, Purple Photo Kitty has a really awesome uh, tutorial that compares knitting with crocheting and how she holds the yarn when she's crocheting. And I've just recently uh, learned how to do a crocheted edge on um, this dress that I made for Kira, which you'll hear about next week. But when I was doing the crocheting, I could definitely see, like it helped me with Continental by being able to crochet. So um, that's a really cool tutorial that you might want to check out if you're, um, if you've never crocheted before and you're trying to learn Continental, that might help you. Let me make sure I talked about everything about the row row socks. Oh, um, when I was doing the, it's a short row heel, and it looks beautiful, if I do say so myself. It took me forever, because, um, I was watching one of Liet's videos, and, um, it's a really straightforward video, but one thing that she says is when you're, after you've done all of your wraps and turns and completed all that and you go to pick up the wraps she's like okay just go to this wrap you'll definitely see it I didn't definitely see it I didn't see my wraps and so I would knit too far or I wouldn't knit far enough and I would try to pick up whatever I don't know what I was picking up but I was having a really hard time and I was determined to do my short row heel correctly so I kept ripping out and I think I ripped it out three times and um, finally I figured it out so that when I did the second heel it was no problem of course it was long enough ago that I probably will need to practice that again but that just means I need to put more um, knit more socks but anyway um, I used stitch markers so that I would know when the next um, when I needed to pick up the next wrap so that I didn't have any problem with finding the wrap and it worked out really well so those are my row row socks and I'm still in love with them and I still can't wait to wear them um, so I'm gonna put those to the side I'm gonna show you the next pattern I have is called my uh, favorite scarf ever it's by Lisa Bruce and I'm doing it on size 6. Actually, you know what? It might not be size 6. Let me look. Sorry. I don't have a table up, so I can't... I can't... I don't have any place to put this other than to lean over and show you my shoulder real close. Let me look again. I thought it was on size 6, but it might not be. No, it's not. It's size 10, which is 6 millimeter. These Susan Bates, they put the millimeter on top and so I keep thinking I'm doing size 6 but it's really US size 10 6 millimeter but I am doing this with my um, socks that rock walking on the wild tide if you'll remember from palette PC it took me forever to pick a pattern because look at the colors I was looking at socks that were made with this colorway and it seemed like it was getting pulled away like the colors were kind of the patterns weren't doing the colors justice and so I couldn't find anything and then I found this pattern and I don't know if you can tell they're little chevron shapes and um, you split your yarn in half and you end up knitting two and then stitching them together so that when you lay it around your 
if you were just to drape it on your around your neck, the chevrons would be facing the same way, which I misinterpreted at first. I thought that it was um, you do two and then you stitch them up the sides, and I was like, no way am I doing all that stitching. But alas, it's not like that, so it's much better. And the pattern is super easy. Um, there's just two rows. You do the knit row, which has got some pattern in it, and then you purl back. Well, when you purl back, you purl two together on the ends. So actually, it says purl two together through the back loop, and I was not being very successful with my purl two together through the back loop. It just kept frustrating me, and so I just decided it's my pattern. I'll do whatever I want, and I don't want to do through the back loop. But anyway... This, I imagine, will take me a while to finish because it's my, um, doesn't take too much to, um, concentrate on it, but it is, um, it's the easy, mindless knitting, but it's a long scarf, so it'll probably take me a while, but I love it, and I love the Socks That Rock yarn, so thank you, Beverly, I love it. And then the next one, I wish I had printed out this pattern, but I don't usually print out my patterns. I usually just, excuse me, look at it on um, Goodreader on my iPhone. So I don't have a picture to show you, but you have to link, click on the link, go look at the picture. It is so adorable. It is called Nicholas's Guinea Pig Sweater. It's by Jen Bian Bianchi or Bianchi. And the, cute, the picture is so cute of this little guinea pig in a sweater. And um, my family has been bugging me about getting guinea pigs or hamsters or mice or something. They just want some little creature, which I don't know. I don't want. I don't want to be the one to have to take care of it. And I know it would live down in Josh's little man cave, so it'd be okay. So I might cave, but I ended up <laughs> taking, sending the picture to Josh and saying, okay, we can get a guinea pig because I wanted to be able to make him little sweaters. It's really, really cute. But no, I'm not making a guinea pig sweater. I'm making a sweater for this little guy. My son Connor brought him to me probably two months ago and asked me if I could make him a sweater. I didn't really know how, and I still don't really know if this is going to fit him because guinea pig is a lot bigger than him. But here's the start. I am making it with leftover sock yarn, which by the way is the same yarn um, Connor, my son, has socks that match. And he also has his little iPhone eye cord cover for his headphones match. So this is now Connor's colorway. But um, it's on size 3 or 3.25 millimeter. And you knit it flat and then like a the front and the back are the same, but you knit them flat, and then you join them, because that'll make for the, um, the little sleeve, which really isn't a sleeve, it's really just a hole, because you don't need sleeves for a guinea pig. <laughs> so, this is, I've only worked on this for maybe an hour. Um, I did get a little confused by the pattern, I think it was written wrong, um, but some of my plurk friends told me gave me their opinions and I just decided to to move on. So that's what I'm doing. And the last work in progress, I actually just started this morning. I went to a local class, a lo local entrelot class here in Nashville. It was only $10, which was amazing. And here is the most exciting part. The teacher, Barb Belden, is from the same little town in Ohio that I'm from. Her husband, who I think of as Mr. Belden, but his Dave Belden, was my 7th grade English teacher. How crazy is that? But anyway, and, she, and also my mom used to sing in her, her group called Sweet Adelines, and so it's really weird, like friends, like... We all ended up in Nashville. But anyway, I have started this pattern called, I think it's, I mean, I would say quant. 
It's by Star Athena. I'm doing it in Lorna's Laces let's see, Happy Valley colorway. My very first Lorna's Laces. It is a, um, it's like a headband kind of thing, or like a scarf. I can even put it around yeah, right there. Um, I just started it this morning. Um, Interlock is not that hard. It was confusing. The most confusing part is picking up stitches, which, oh, I mean, that's what you have to do when you make socks, depending on the kind of heel that you do. So it's not too bad. I was really overwhelmed, but I've got this, and I'm going to make that for Kira. She's going to love that. And I've only done, I think you do, I do this twice more. It seems kind of short. And then you tie it, you have a eye cord at the bottom. But it's not the right gauge. I have it a lot bigger than what it calls for. It calls for... I mean, not a ton bigger. It calls for, the yarn calls for a size 6 needle. And I'm doing it with a size 10 and a half needle. And I, I mean, it's going to be kind of drapey, which is fine. I just wanted a bigger needle so that it would be easier to see the edges to pick up. That's what Barb suggested. And um, I really wanted to use this yarn, so that's that. But I wanted to show you something that Barb did. It's a free pattern, so I don't think it's against the, the rules or the law or whatever for me to show you this. But uh, this isn't the pattern. This is, um, she took the pattern, the instructions, and she enlarged them. And here's an example. If it said, this says odd numbers, odd number rows 13 through 21 work this. And then beside it, she wrote a 13, a 15, 17, 19, 21. So when you finish row 13, you just cross it off. When you finish row 15, you just cross it off. So you do 13, come down here and cross off 14, 15, 16. I thought that was really a good idea because then you don't get confused where you are in your pattern because the main part of interlock, at least so far, is making sure that you know where you are. Don't get lost. Um, maybe once I got better at interlock, I'd be able to find my, where I am. But, like, it just says knit one and then turn your work and then purl one and turn your work and then slip one and knit one and turn your work. So that you're working in really short rows and it's hard to read your uh, read your knitting if there's so, the, the rows are so short and they're all pretty much the same. So I thought that was a really good idea, and I'm very impressed because interlock has been one of those things that I've been overwhelmed by, but it's working out. Let's move on to souvenirs. My first souvenir is the Lorna's Laces. Now, I don't know how many of you all know Beverly Love or Palette PC. But I want to warn you, she is like a drug dealer, so beware. She gave me free yarn. That was what drug dealers do. They give you their first part for free. And then, on Plurk, she pointed me to a sale. She's done it more than once, but I only fell this once. So I want you to beware of Palette PC, otherwise known as Beverly Love. She's like a drug dealer, but you're going to love it. So I got the Lorna Slices. This is from Jimmy Bean. Um, and then I also got the Regia World Ball. I don't remember. Oh, how embarrassing. I should know what country this is. It probably says somewhere on here. But it's not in English, so I can't tell you. I love it. It's, um... It's got dark blue, light blue, yellow, and then I don't know if you can see this little green stripe right there. That's my favorite stripe right there. And then I got this one. Yellows, dark green, light green, blue, 
the yellow is a little speckled, which I love the speckle on the yarn. And I also got Best Foot Forward. It's, I don't see a color name. Color number 7330. Oh, I, it's called Fruit Salad. And this is how it knits up, if you can see it. But it's beautiful. I got all four of those skeins of yarn. Which, all of the sock yarn is enough to make a pair of socks. Um, for like 30 bucks, including shipping. And then they gave me a coupon for free shipping again. So, they have some really awesome clearance shopping sales at Jimmy Beans and see now she's like what are, what are the little minions called who give the drugs for the drug dealer she's got me in on it so I'm sorry I've already fallen so anyway those are my um, yarn stash enhancements and then oh somebody's at the door that doesn't happen very often hold on sorry somebody came to the door my big bad attack dog won't stop barking. So every time I go to push record, she'll bark. So I'm sorry. I think she's done. I don't know. Anyway, back to me. The um, next thing that's super exciting I wanted to show you was uh, my project bags. Um, if you'll remember, I have a had a shortage of project bags in my life, and I ended up getting that Ziploc or the. Um, igloo bag which I still love uh, but it's not really a project bag it's more of a little cooler or a lunch box or something but I still love it but anyway um, Gail from the Alpaca and You podcast otherwise known as uh, I think she's a knitomaniac she sent me some project bags she said she likes to sew um, I like to receive, so it worked out really well. <laughs> um, they're so cute. This is the first one. That little, they're all the same type, uh, little drawstring, drawstring. And they cute, with a red lining. This one is holding my entrelock. And this one has my little bear sweater. The inside stripey and I have another one. Oh, sorry down here the cherries how cute is that and I've saved my favorite one for last I turned it inside out because the eggs crack me up but the inside are roosters I think there's chickens on there too I would hope there be chickens because the other side is all eggs. I just love it. I love how it's paired together. They're so cute. And um, so I put my eggs on the outside. Thank you so, so much for my project bags. They meant a lot to me. They're um, beautiful and they definitely have been, being, been put to good use. And um, I told her when I got them that she kind of made me want to learn how to sew. I've never really wanted to learn how to sew. Um, one time in high school, junior high maybe, for 4-H I sewed a little outfit and it was okay, but my mom is a professional seamstress, meaning she worked out of our house and people would come and have do alterations or make like prom dresses or wedding dresses and whatnot. So I kind of, I took for granted how easy it was to get things made, but then at the same time, I, most people would be excited to have something handmade or hand sewn, but I was always like, oh no, that's the cheap version, because my mom will make it, because that way she doesn't have to buy it. I didn't realize that she really had to buy a lot, and it took a lot of work. So now I appreciate it more, but getting these bags made me think, oh, I can sew. And what perfect timing, because I inherited a sewing machine. Um, I mean, it's kind of sad because it was my mother-in-law's best friend's mom 
she went into the nursing home and um, they decided that I, even though I've never said anything about wanting to learn how to sew, they decided I deserved the sewing machine. So they have it. Um, maybe I can insert a picture here because I'm not going to pick the camera up to show you where it is. But I, it's a um, Singer Deluxe Zigzag Sewing Machine Model 758. It's really old and it is really well taken care of. Here is the book that came with it. And it looks just like that. I've got the cabinet, I've got a chair, and the sewing machine. The sewing machine goes down in the cabinet when you're not using it. Only I've left mine out so everyone knows that I have a sewing machine now. I haven't even plugged it in because I don't have any material. I don't have any... I have some thread, but I don't even know if it's the right kind of thread. I basically have nothing, um, but I will, and one day I will become a, a seamstress. My mom is so proud. She's so excited. She's like, you're going to become a seamstress just like me. <laughs> and then my last stash enhancement came from yesterday. I'm sweating. I'm so sorry. I look gross. Um, we went to Big Lots, and... They had two amazing knitting books. First one is called Family Knits, five bucks. It's a little ripped. That's okay, I'm gonna take that off anyway. I'm gonna take it off right now. Oh, maybe. And I didn't, they have one of those um, pictures in that picture index in the back so you can see all kinds of things. You probably can't see anything, but um, I wanted to show you two things which I did not flag. So let me look for them real quick. Page 88 and page 106. I love this picture. How cute is that? I want to make the scarf just so I can give it to Kira, just so she can wear it and look exactly like that. She's like my little doll I get to dress up. I really like the scarf. I love cables. Cables were one of those things that um, overwhelmed me, and now I love them because I know how to do them, and they look fantastic, and they look harder than they are. And then... I want to make that so bad. It calls for... All of the yarn in here is for Debbie Bliss. It calls for 30 50 gram balls of Debbie Bliss Cashmerino Erin. How in the world does anybody afford to make that? I thought the back was showing somewhere but I can't find it. I really, really, really want to make that sweater, but I don't foresee that happening in the near future because I have no idea how anybody could afford 30 balls of yarn. Um, but maybe I'll just um, buy like three or four at a time and start knitting. I don't know, but I really like that. It looks like it would be challenging, um, but something I could definitely do. And they had... Another knits book, it's called Heirloom Knits. The other one was called Family Knits. And this goes, f and it's also $5, retails for $29.95. This is really cool because it goes from the 1820s. They show patterns based on the 1820s every decade up until 2010, which I have to tell you, I don't really like the latest ones, but the older ones are really pretty. Um, I want to show you my favorite one. I'm sorry, I should have um, marked it, but I didn't. So, I have to deal with it. I really, really want to make this. It's a lampshade cover and a curtain, and they're so beautiful. That calls for. hundred gram ball I don't know I can't read it calls for a hundred gram yard 
approximately 570 yards of Euroflax Paris. I don't know what that means. Like, I wouldn't know. Maybe you could help me. I don't know what that material is, so I don't know. I don't even know how to get it. Some kind of, like, I would think it would be, like, lace or linen. I don't know, but it's so pretty. So that's my souvenirs as of lately. And um, I'm going to cut this short. I don't know how long it is because I've had to pause you so many times. But thank you so much for coming. Hopefully next week I will be able to uh, record again and give you my... Um, I'll probably have another works in progress. Um, and then my finished objects. So... That's my plan. I might stick to it and I might not. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, and I hope you have a good week. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.